passive solar hot water systems depend on gravity to separate light hot water from dense cold water. But the difference in weight is so small that thermosiphoning systems are, are only effective in very sunny areas. Passive thermosiphoning storage tanks must always be higher than collectors to function. This places limits on the storage tank location. Active solar hot water systems use pumps and differential controllers to automate the process of collecting and storing solar heat. So, storage tanks may be located in basements far from the area of heat collection. Active systems do consume some power, but the value of heat collected is great compared to the power used to circulate water. Active systems use differential controllers to regulate pumps and collect solar heat. 10K NTC thermistor probes are connected to collector and storage to relay information to the controller. At 75 degrees Fahrenheit, they have a resistance of 10,000 ohms. As the temperature increases, their resistance decreases. When the collector probe is the same temperature as the storage probe, the resistance of both probes is the same, and the voltage at the common junction is half the supply voltage. This is how differential temperatures may be sensed. Most commercial differential controllers have separate adjustments for the pump on and pump off duration, as well as other unnecessary whistle and bell adjustments, such as the high temperature shut off. A pump should never be shut off when the temperature is too high. An empty collector quickly reaches stagnation temperatures above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's better to add additional storage tanks if the storage temperature exceeds 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, it's easier to store a lot of heat at a low temperature than a little heat at a high temperature. Richard Helliger and I feel that most controllers on the market today are overpriced, so we decided to design a low-cost, rugged, differential controller that would be easy to install and easy to program. For this reason, we designed the simple, basic differential controller from an understanding of electronics and a lot of experimentation. Here is a simple explanation of the BDC operation. Basically, a green LED comes on when the pump is on, and a red LED glows in proportion to the amount of heat available. All the user has to do is make one simple adjustment with the integrated differential pot to choose a point between maximum heat collection and minimum power conservation. When the red LED is dim or off, there is little or no heat available. Under this condition, the green LED should normally be off. A clockwise adjustment increases the differential, and a counterclockwise adjustment lowers the differential. That's all there is to it. Having separate adjustments for the differential on and the differential off is confusing and unnecessary. The only decision a BDC user has to make involves deciding on the trade-offs between heat collection and power consumption. The red LED is used to help the user make this decision. If the red LED is dim, it may be wise to have the controller switch off at this point. But a higher differential may be appropriate if power is limited. You came along and picked the flowers from my mind. I could have sworn you'd turn the water into wine And now I'm chasing dreams but falling far behind But that's all fine Who am I to change things now? The veil's been lifted, now I'm looking at your face But I can't help but think it's not the time or place I'd hate to call fate's bluff and make a huge mistake, but that's okay. Who am I to change things now? Who am I to change the way things 
have been to dive a little deeper in the pool that we fell in. I only hope I don't live long enough to regret what I'm missing. The whispers grew into a deafening young roar. The tables turned, but in whose favor I'm not sure. And now time's beating out of rhythm at our door, but that's all right. Who am I to change things now? Who am I? 